This question used to be on one of the practice tests for the previous version of the SAT before it went digital, and pretty much all my students would get this wrong. Uh, it's, it's tricky. Now, it would be in a location in that section where we would know it's going to be tricky. It's one of the last questions in that section. Uh, you should know that there's a trap coming, but a lot of people don't have that ability to kind of sense that and think about that. And I do think that even on the digital SAT, that is an important skill, is knowing where you are in the modules, knowing where the traps are likely to be, and if something feels too easy, then it might be too easy for that spot. There might be a trap. So let's talk about what we're supposed to do here. There are a couple ways we can avoid the trap. Uh, the first thing is um, I would notice in the choices that we have this, this choice of like, does the D get multiplied by 7.35 or by 14.7, right? So I would try to sort that out first. Let's look at the story with that in mind. A laundry service is buying detergent and fabric softener from its supplier. The supplier will deliver no more than 300 pounds in a shipment. Each container of detergent weighs 7.35 pounds, so there's that number, and each container of fabric softener weighs 6.2 pounds. The service wants to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent uh, as containers of fabric softener. Let D represent the number of containers of detergent, and so that's helpful. Uh, and let S represent the number of containers of fabric softener, where D and S are non-negative integers, which of the following systems of inequalities best represents the situation. So I'm reading fast because most of that is just like filler. We kind of get it. But um, the, the thing is that this 7.35 is a rate. It is the value of a, a jug of um, detergent. So I get why they're doubling it here. They're, they're trying to mess with you because it does talk about this like at least twice as many, but that's not going to affect the value. So that will affect the other equation but it will not affect this one. So C and D, they're just distractions. We don't, we're not doubling the value. It, it's, it's not, it's, it's, this is what it's worth. So that rate of 7.35 needs to be attached to it. So I keep saying worth, it's not the price, but it's the number of pounds, but it's not, it's not 14.7 pounds, 7.35 pounds per thing. So when we increase the D by one, we're going to want to multiply by that, that number. So there you go. Hopefully, uh, most people are getting that, but that's not where the trap is. Most people get the next part wrong. So um, the next part is really about uh, this ending equation, right? So we don't care anymore about the top equation. That is solved. So the second equation or inequality is relating to this phrase here. The service wants to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent as containers of fabric softener. So if you read that, then the answer, right? There's twice as many detergent as fabric softener. So if you read that, twice as many detergent as softener, right? We're multiplying this 2D for every S, right? That, that feels right. And some of you are just gonna pick that and move on, but that's a trap. And, and you know, that's me telling you the answer is A, and I'll show you how we could have seen that trap coming, but like, it's not gonna be that easy, guys. If it's like the second or third last question in a section, you know, you gotta be aware that they're doing this kind of stuff. So how can we um, figure this out, right? So some of you uh, intuitively will recognize that when they say twice as many contagions of detergent, we actually need to multiply the softener by two. But some of you are going, wait, wait, why? Well, oh, let me show you why. Let's pick some numbers. Let's arithmetize because we can put some numbers to this sentence to make it make more sense, right? So let's just assume for a second, let me come over here, that we have... Uh, five softeners, and uh, we can think of a number for the detergent that would then satisfy the sentence, right? So S is softeners, and my fives also look like S's, so that helps. Um, and then we want to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent as containers of fabric softener. So if we have five softeners, we might be like, okay, we want it twice as much, so that's 10, but at least twice as much. So let's go to 11, right? Let's go a little higher, and that should work, right? 11 detergent is at least twice as much softener. Right. Hopefully that part makes sense because now that we got numbers, I don't. If you don't understand that, I I don't know how to help you. This is this is just numbers are bigger than other numbers. Um, now why did I pick five? Again, it's just a random number to help me understand it in some way that's concrete. But also, like I said, my S's look like five, so at least it makes it easier that way. Now if we take those numbers, they should work in the inequalities that we have because um, they satisfy the story uh, as we read it. So if we go to the choices, right, we can go to choice A and we would replace these. So 11 is greater than or equal to two times five. That's true, right? 11 is greater than or equal to 10. True. But if we go to B, that also works, right? So two times 11 is greater than or equal to five. So 22 is in fact greater than or equal to five. So maybe this setup doesn't help. 
Now, some of you would still realize with the numbers, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I see I'm multiplying the wrong thing. I want it to be the S that's multiplied. And so right there, you even though both worked, you would be able to see them working and that will move you in the direction of A. But here's another thing we can do to really show why it's one and not the other. And this is weird, but I think this is a good skill to know. I use it occasionally on some hard inequalities questions. We tried the number 11 because we knew that that satisfied the story. Let's try a number that doesn't, right? So with inequality, sometimes we want to kind of see numbers that work with the situation, but other times we want to see numbers that don't work. So what if we only had nine things of detergent, right? So let's, let's again, review the story. What are they saying? They're saying that we need at least twice as many detergents as softeners. So if we doubled S, we'd get 10, but nine is not enough, right? That's not double the number of softeners. So this is a situation that fails, right? This is not okay according to the story, which means it also should not be okay according to the inequality. But watch what happens if we go to choice A here, right? So choice A, D is nine and nine is greater than or equal to two times five. Nine is greater than or equal to 10. No, it's not, right? So it failed, but we wanted it to fail, right? It should fail. But if we go to B, two times nine, is greater than or equal to five. So 18 is greater than or equal to five. Yes, it is, but that's a problem, right? This set of detergents and softeners should not work, but it does work in choice B. So that means that that inequality isn't right. It's not capturing the situation. It's including things that it should not include. So that is proof that B is wrong. It worked when it shouldn't. That is a case of a failure of the equation. So now we have even more evidence that it's choice A. That's weird. I will totally admit that that is weird. But, you know, if I had the time and I wanted to make sure I wasn't falling for a trap, that is the kind of thing I would do. I would obviously do it much quicker because for me, I'm, I'm used to this. So this is much more like a, a 20 second little side adventure to prove that answer rather than a three minute side adventure like it was here. But, um, you know, incorporate these things in your process. When you do questions when you're not on the clock, try these weirder things that makes them faster for when you are on the clock, when you are taking an actual module. So you got to experiment and you got to notice too when traps are likely to appear. And the question bank, that's hard to do. Just think about whether the question is labeled as easy, medium, or hard. But um, I do know from experience that pretty much everyone gets this wrong. So you need a, a way to spot the trap and to avoid it.